Hello and welcome to today's demonstration. My name's Andrew Price, I'm with New Wave Technologies and today we're going to go through the steps involved in downloading and installing Lightwave Server and a simple demo application to show how the product can work and can be set up very quickly and very easily. So the steps that we're going to go through, we're going to download the Lightwave software from the uh, New Wave website, we're going to obtain a trial license, we're going to then configure and start Lightwave Server. Uh, we're going to then download the employee demo software and we're going to configure and start that demo application. And then finally, we're going to run the client code that uh, accesses the, uh, uh, the whole application and shows it working end to end. So before we get into the demo steps themselves, a quick refresher on Lightwave Server. This is the high level architecture of the product. As you can see, we have Lightwave Server here running on the non-stop. Lightwave Server is able to REST enable any non-stop application. And in the demo that we're going to be looking at today, we have an employee demo, a very simple demo application that we've written running as a pathway server. The Lightwave Server will be configured to present the transactional services of that pathway server as REST services. And then out on the left hand side, we have REST clients that are consuming those REST services and for the demo today we will be using a browser user interface and uh, showing how to consume those services uh, in that way. Okay so let's get into the steps involved. Firstly we need to download the Lightwave software. So down, the Lightwave software is available on the uh, New Wave uh, Download Center. You can access this at downloads.newwavetech.com all of the links that I'm using today will be shown at the end of the session so that you can make a note of them if you wanted to go through these steps yourselves. So from the download page, we're going to download the Lightwave server software, uh, TNSX, and we're going to, that's going to be a pack file that will download to the PC, and then we're going to upload from the PC to the nonstop and unpack it. And uh, I'll show you the contents of that uh, uh, unpacked pack file in a second but also while we're here this is where we obtain our um, trial license so if we click on this link and click through we'll be given uh, this screen that allows us to select the product that we want to download or that we want to obtain a license for I'm sorry uh, we just provide the system number and some contact information click on submit and a license will be automatically generated and emailed to us okay so let's assume we've done that We've also downloaded the pack file and let's jump over to our non-stop server. So here we have the contents of the pack file having been unpacked uh, and we uh, also have a license. So let's have a quick look at that license. You can see here the license is valid and this is my system number. It's been uh, generated following the uh, submission of that form as I just showed you. So we've got a valid license, we just now need to configure our uh, Lightwave server instance and we should be able to get up and running. So this is the startup file that contains the basic configuration information for the product. We want to set the process PPD as something other than uh, the default most likely. And then we need to specify a TCP IP process or we can let that default to $ZTC0, which I'm going to do. And we need to specify two ports that we know are free. We're going to use those ports uh, as we move forward. So the first is the console port. The console is used to configure uh, the product. So I'm going to specify port 5400 for that. And then we need to specify the service port, which is the port through which the REST services uh, will be made available. So I'm going to specify 5450 for that. And that's all we need to do. We should now be able to run that startup macro. And it goes through and starts up and you can see now that the console is running on port 5400 which is what we wanted. Let's just have a quick look at what we've got running. And you can see $APLWS there running in primary and backup. And also we've started a work process, which is going to do the actual work of um, handling those REST services. 
Okay, so let's now jump across to the console on port 5400. And we can then log in, first of all. The default username and password is admin and admin, and obviously you would change that uh, as soon as you've installed the product. And here we can see from the dashboard the $AP LWS that we just started, the worker process. And we can also see that the console is set up on port 5400, which is what we're connected to. And that port 5450 is uh, ready on the, as the service port, but there's no services available yet. Okay, so now we want to uh, define the service. Uh, before we do that, let's have a quick look at the uh, software that's available as part of the demo. We need to jump across to the uh, New Wave GitHub site, which you can see here. And then we have this LWS employee CRUD folder, which is where all the software we're going to be using for the employee demo is configured. I would suggest that you just uh, download this entire folder. And if you do that, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so we've got a few things in here that we're going to be referring to. So this is the entire GitHub repository downloaded. And the first thing that we need to do is get the LightWave configuration. So here I've got the LightWave configuration that we're going to be using. So we go back to our dashboard. Okay, we want to add a service. This is the service that's going to be uh, pointing to the employee server. So it's a very quick process. We click on the services, we click on upload to import a service. And then we go to that service definition. This is a pre canned service definition in JSON format that we're going to add. Employee service, we can import that. And it's going to say it needs a little bit more configuration. We just need to specify an access control policy and enable the service. Okay, we now see there's a service enabled. If we go back to the dashboard, we can also see that that service port now has a service enabled. So that's going to be handling the incoming requests that we're going to want to route to the employee server. Okay, so we've now got LightWave server configured. The next thing we need to do is get the uh, employee demo pathway server up and running. So if we go back to our GitHub repository that we've downloaded, and we can open up this server directory. And in here, there's a readme file which tells us exactly what we need to do. So we need to uh, download the pack file in binary format and then unpack it. Uh, we need to build the pathway server. And then we're going to get into the configuration. So. Let's jump back across to our non-stop and we're going to go to APEMP, which is where I've downloaded the uh, contents of that pack file and actually unpacked it. Okay, so we now need to edit the startup file. We need to just customize the um, pathbond name. Change that to APMP. And then we should be able to exit. And start up that pathbond. Okay, we've now got the employee server using the source code that was downloaded from the GitHub repository running. And the next thing we need to do is make a small configuration change to our um, LightWave server. So if we go back over to, uh, we want 
to stop APLWS. We want to edit that startup file. And we want to specify the employee path mon define. And we need that to be APEMP. We can exit from there and then restart our Lightwave server. Okay, it's back running on port 5400. Let's just go back over, log in and make sure that we're all good. We'll have to log in again. And our service is still there. So everything is configured correctly. The next thing we need to do, we're almost there, is get the client code that's going to access this new service. So we go back to our GitHub repository and there's a client folder here. The client folder includes an index.html and some JavaScript. Now if we run this index file, this is what it looks like. Here we need to specify uh, the Lightwave server and uh, port name, a uh, port number that we specified for the um, so, uh, for the service port, and that's it. That's it there. So if we click Get Employees, here we can now see the request that's going up to Lightwave server on that port, and the response that's come back in JSON format with all of the data present in it. Now, if we want to see what that looks like on the non-stop, we can go back over to the employee server subvolume, and this is the data file. Um, you can see that it's open, and that's the data file. You can see the data, the uh, records that are in there uh, being presented back to us through the browser interface. Just to be sure, let's go ahead and delete the last one. Back over to Tackle. Copy again. And you can see we're down one record and the Andrew Price record has disappeared. And that is pretty much it. We've now got a working demo. So we've installed Lightwave Server, we've installed the employee demo server and uh, got it all up and running, accessing from this client code here and showing the end-to-end -end demo that uh, we talked about at the beginning. So if you would like to try setting this demo up in your own environment, the links that you need are listed on the screen now. Um, you should be able to access everything that we have talked about and get this up and running very, very quickly. As you can see, it's taken us about 10 minutes to do. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at uh, any of the information, contact information listed on the screen. And I wish you all the best with your uh, trial of Lightwave Server. Thank you for your time.